So today we're going to be doing this vertical image effect. It looks really, really cool. And I'm going to show you how this thing actually works in mobile as well. A lot of people have tried to do this sort of effect, but with all those tutorials, there's always the skipping effect. Now over here in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do this, how it's going to work in mobile, and you're going to avoid that whole skipping effect that happens when trying to pull this off. We are going to be using Elementor Pro for this. If you don't have Elementor Pro, you can use the free alternative of Pro Elements. A link for that is going to be in the description of this video. Another thing you're going to need is my resource page that I have for this tutorial. Over here, you're going to find the images that you can use and follow along with, as well as all the different codes that we're going to be using while building this out. It isn't really hard to do, and let's get into it. So here in the Elementor Page Builder, we're going to start things off with our first container. So we're going to click the plus sign, say Flexbox. I'm going to choose this one with four columns. Now for the settings of this, we're going to make sure that the content width is full width, make sure it's 100%, and we're just gonna go into desktop and we're going to physically set this to 100%, just like that. Now, if we go back into desktop, we're gonna say the min height, we're gonna say VH, and we're gonna say that this is 100. The next thing we're gonna be looking for is align items, we're gonna say that this is center. Then under style, we're gonna give a background to this. So in this tutorial, I'm just gonna go for a gradient. So for the first color, I'm gonna set it to a dark gray, and then the other color is going to be black. And I'm going to make sure that this is radial. And so this has that sort of look to it. Now that that's done, I'm going to go over to advanced. I'm going to make sure that the padding is zero. Then one final thing, we should just go back into layout and just make sure that the gaps are set to zero over here. Okay, so now we're done with that. I'm just going to open this up in the navigator over here. If you don't have your navigator, just click this button over here and then this is going to pop up. You're going to be needing this in this tutorial. So for the settings of this first container, I'm going to be referring to these things as columns a lot. So don't mind me. So when you know I'm talking about the first column or first container, it's going to be this over here. So for the settings of this first container, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure it's full width, make sure that it's percentage. I'm going to say that this is about a 64. The min height, I'm going to set this to an 800 pixels. And then justify content, I'm going to put this into the middle. Now that we have that done, we're going to head over to advanced. We're going to make sure that the margins are all set to zero. The padding, I want to de-link this. I'm going to put some padding on the right hand side now just to move this away from the images. I'm going to put about 30 pixels over there. Then for the size, I'm going to set to grow. And then one of the last things that we have to do is under CSS ID, we're going to give this a name. And this, I'm going to say that this is column content. So over here, let me just go add the heading. I'm going to go and add the text editor. And I'm going to go and add the button. Now for the settings of all of these, this heading, I'm going to make sure that it's going to be on the right hand side. The same for the text. And then the same thing for the button. So it's leaning towards the images side. The color of the heading, I'm going to set this to white. And the color of the text, I'm also going to set this to white. Okay, so now we're done with this main container. We're going to go to this second container over here and we're going to start stylizing this one. So you can click on this container over here to go into the settings or you can click here in the navigator and it'll get you to the same place. Okay, so for the settings of this, the width, I'm going to set this to 12%. The min height, I'm going to set this to 800 as well. The direction is fine. Everything else is fine over here. And then under additional options, the overflow, I'm going to say that this is hidden. Okay, so now we're done with that. I'm going to go to advanced. Then over here, for the padding, I'm going to de-link this. And for the left and right, I'm going to give 5 pixels. Then for the size, I'm also going to select this as grow. And then for the CSS ID, I'm going to call this column 1. Now if you scroll down to the bottom, we get this custom CSS. We're going to click and open this. Now let's head off to that reference page I was talking about. Again, the link is in the description. If we scroll down the reference page, you can see that here is the column one stuff that we have to use. Here's the CSS code. We just go to the right hand side, we say copy, and we're gonna take that and we are going to paste it right over here. Let me explain to you what's happening here in this code. We're going to be stacking images inside this container, and that's also gonna have a CSS ID. For the column we're busy editing, we're gonna be putting linear gradients. So what that is, is on the top and the bottom of this, it's got that fading effect. So that's what that's all about. And then here is going to be the animation things that we're going to be triggering inside that column. So now if we go back into this column, what we're going to do is we're going to add our first image. So if we go click on this plus sign, we go to the image, we take this widget, we drag it across and put it into our container. Over here, we're going to select our first image. 
which is going to be this one over here. I chose everything as portraits over here. Portrait images work really well. Say so select. Then for the resolution, I'm going to say that this is custom and I'm going to say that this is 170 by 250. Then if we go to style, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a border radius of about five and I want a box shadow to this. So for the box shadow, the blur, I'm going to set it to nine. And then the actual color is I'm going to put a 50% purple. So just like that. And now I'm happy with that. Now, if we go to advanced, we have to give this a class name. For the class name, we're going to call this image one. Now you can see the image is starting to move up the screen. Now that we have this image and all the settings, we're going to duplicate it until there's five images in this container. So duplicate, duplicate, five. Don't worry about them being all out of sync. This is just being inside the builder. If you reloaded it, everything would be in sync again. Now for these other four images we just added, we are just going to change the image itself. So I've selected the second one. I'm gonna change the image to this one over here. I'm gonna do the same thing for the third one, the fourth, the same thing, and then the fifth. Okay. So now that we have this whole column set up, what we're going to do now, just to speed everything along, is we're going to take this column and we're going to duplicate it. And then we can actually go to this very last one and we can just take this one out. Now for the settings of the second container, the only thing that we have to change over here is if we go to advanced, we can go and give this a proper CSS ID, which is going to be column two. And then if we scroll down to this custom CSS, we're going to be removing this one over here. We're gonna go into my resource page. We're gonna scroll down to the second column CSS. We're going to go and copy this. And then inside this custom CS window, we are just going to replace it. For the images of them, we're going to be doing the same thing with the images inside. So we're going to go to the images, we're going to go to advanced, and we're going to say that this is image two for the CSS class, and we're going to do this for all the five images in it. Okay, so now we've done that. Now we can go ahead and just choose our images that we want for this column. So I'm going to click on this first image widget. I'm going to go into the content, and I'm going to start selecting the images for this column. So here's for the first one. Go to the second, go to content, choose my second one, third, do the same thing. I go over to the fourth one, same thing again. And then the last one, content, change image. Now, if we publish this just to view it in the front end, you can see that it is starting to take shape over here and that everything we're doing is correct. So now let's go and finish this off with our third and final column. So back in the page builder, all we have to do is just duplicate the second container, the same thing as we did before. Now we have a duplicated this last empty container we are going to delete. So now for this third container, we do the same principle again. We go to advanced. We come down to the CSS ID. We're going to say that this is column three. We scroll down to the custom CSS. Then in my resource page, we go down to the third block. We copy this and we replace what's in there with the new code with reference of column three and image three and then the same thing like the others we go into the first image of this column we go into the advanced we go into the css classes and we change this image two to image three advanced three third image click advanced go to three fourth image advanced change it to image three and the final image advanced change it to image three and then we just go and select the images so first picture, go to content, change the picture. Second picture, go to content, change this picture. Third, same thing. Fourth, content, change picture. And the fifth, go over to content. So now we've published, let's go view it in the front end. So if we go view this here now in the front end, you can see that the animation is working perfectly. If you want this more closer to the middle in desktop, what we do is we go into the page builder in the main container, here in the main container, we can go to advanced and we can just put a left and right padding over here. So we can deselect this. And then for the left, we can say that it's 30. And for the right, we can say it's 30. And you can really play around with it. But when you do this here for a desktop, do make sure that in mobile, it is set to zero. So now that this is ready for desktop, we are just gonna tidy up a couple of settings for mobile and this thing is good to go. So now if we go into the Elementor editor, we are gonna switch this into mobile. Now, if I scroll down, you can see that things don't look quite right there. It's very quick to fix. So now on the second container, which is going to be this column one of the images, 
we are going to go to the width while making sure we in the mobile view and we're going to set this to 25. Now we're going to do the same setting on the second image container. We're going to set that width to 25, making sure that's percentage. And then the third container, we're going to do the exact same thing. We are going to make sure that it's in percentage and we are going to say 25. So now you can see that in mobile view, it's looking a hell of a lot better. Once you've done that, then this is the last time that we click publish. This is definitely something you should really consider putting into your website. It does look absolutely amazing. I hope you found this video quite useful. If you did, please smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. Those two things really make a big impact on a small channel like mine. And it really does help me navigate on what content to make next for you guys. If you have any suggestions or comments, then just put a link down below and let me see what I can do for you. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.